What is up guys, JPR Tech here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the best settings that I like to use with my Canon EOS M when I'm shooting raw video. Yeah, as so of now, this camera is about 10 years old, and I can't believe that we're talking about a 10-year-old camera that is an APS mirrorless camera, so small and compact that can shoot raw video. It is insane. And when you add in the price, which only costs about $100 used, and I got this in mint condition. I mean, this is a brand new. Of course, it's not going to compare to modern 4K image quality, but we do get amazing cinematic, great colors, great codec to work with. So it's just an awesome camera. If you want to get into filming and understand how film cameras work, this is a great start. All right, guys, so let's get started with some of the settings that I like to use. Now, if you're going to be shooting B-rolls and doing short burst clips when you're doing like a travel video, the best image quality, the best resolution is shooting at 2.8K. Or if you need a little bit of a longer recording time, then the 2.5K will do. As far as resolution goes in those settings, just try to shoot at the highest resolution you can as possible. With the 2.8K, I have it at 2800 by 1170 and I just leave it at that and now for consistency I like to keep the aspect ratio the same in all my shooting modes so when I'm going to be doing cinematic you know music style kind of videos then I will leave the aspect ratio at 2.39 by 1 which crops heavily the top and the bottom actually it doesn't really crop on the image it does use a lot of the sensor but it just adds it shoots like this anamorphic style and it's just amazing what magic lantern does with the sensor it just create a very anamorphic style shot and looks very cinematic now about the bit depth i leave it at 10. come on guys i mean like how many cameras can shoot in 10 bit only like cameras way over 1500 dollars are the only cameras that shoot 10 bit so just leave it at 10 bit it's fine you don't have to push it all the way to 14 bit it's not that much of a difference when you cross over that 10 bit. Another advantage of shooting in those 2.8, 2.5K mode is the fact that we cut down on aliasing and the color fringing heavily. I mean, drastically reduces it almost to nothing. And of course, another thing to keep in mind is that lenses do affect, you know, those color fringing and flares and whatnot. But, you know, I noticed shooting with the kit lens, which is really sharp and very crispy it does make a big difference shooting in the k modes the 2.8 k modes talking about the recording time it does limit heavily how long you can record for but that is a pro that is a good thing you don't want to have long footages that take gigs of your sd card if you were just going to use only like three four seconds of the clip so being able to only record for like 8 to 15 seconds is actually a good thing. Just amazing that we're talking about a $100 camera that can shoot 10 bits. So again, for B-rolls, short bursts, head over to 2.5, 2.8K because those have the best image quality that this camera can spit out. Now for longer shots, say you want to do an interview, a headshot, then I would recommend switching over to the 5K FRTP. Now again, 5K FRTP is going to be a slightly lower resolution than the 2.8K, actually drastically lower resolution, but it's okay. Again, when you head over to MLV, you're going to stretch that and it's going to look really crispy. And you could even export and upscale to 4K, 5K, and the image just looks amazing. Now it does have suffer from a little bit of aliasing and artifacts in the really bright contrasty areas and especially like defined lines do suffer from aliasing but it's not that bad compared to 1080p which ooh, i can't believe i said that in this video never touch 1080p just don't touch it stay with 5k frtp so you get the long recording times and pretty decent quality and lastly if you want to do some time lapse, then I would recommend 4K because it's got the best balance of everything. It's got the resolution, which is really nice. It's really sharp. And also you do get 
um, all the fun stuff like aspect ratios that you do get in the movie. So it's really nice that we can get some time lapse footage and it's just a movie already set for you. But a really quick heading inside the camera menu, if you head over to 4K, don't forget to go in the quick menu, the Q menu inside of 4K and set your 4K time lapse to the dedicated shutter that you want to shoot at. Personally, I love keeping it around 1 8, so you just select 8 or 10, something like that. Uh, very low. The lower the shutter speed, the smoother the time lapse will look. So it's really epic when you have a lot of motion, like clouds and people. It's going to look really nice and very like futuristic. And some honorable mentions that we can talk about lastly is the 2K mode. 2K is really awesome. Um, you can shoot continuously with great resolution. It's got all the benefits of 2.8K and the 5K FRTP, but there's just one con, and that is the heavy crop that it does. It crops in heavily into the sensor, so you're gonna have a really tight space. But actually, that's a good thing if you wanna shoot the sun, if you wanna shoot uh, animals, birds, you got a great crop that is gonna turn any lens into a great zoom lens, and the image is gonna be just amazing. So if you're gonna do some wildlife photography, or actually we don't do photography with the Canon, sorry to insult you with that. So if you're gonna do some wildlife recording, uh, definitely 2K is an honorable mention. 2K gives you that freedom to shoot continuously without any hiccups. So really quick, I'm just gonna go over some of the technical settings that I have on my Magic Lantern very quickly. So you could go along with me with your camera and see what settings might be different from each other. But um, yeah, it's gonna be very quick. You know, I have my white balance. It really doesn't matter if you're shooting raw, but I leave it at 5,000. Uh, my ISO is at 100, uh, the lowest possible you can get. And, but I'm not afraid to shoot at ISO 800. Uh, also my shutter speed, I got it at 1 48th of a second. Um, aperture, and again, if the shutter doesn't really get to 1 48, you could do the shutter fine tuning under your movie settings. That is the third menu on your Magic Lantern. So more on that later. But again, 1 48th of a second. Aperture, I have it, uh, that's just depend on your shooting, what you're shooting, the, you know, if you wanna go with a, uh, bokeh, do you need bokeh or sharpness? There's the aperture. And my picture style is neutral. And I just have sharpness at seven. So when I do the time lapse, it does, it does affect the image quality because it's recording those JPEG. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that from some other YouTube, but I'm just sharing my setting. I don't know, sorry if I'm mistaken. But anyway, I do have it at neutral with seven sharpness. My Expo override is on and Expo simulation is in movie. Global draw, so heading over to the second menu, global draw is live view, of course. And I do have my histogram showing because I want to see, you know, my exposure. I always want to confirm that. My presets, uh, again, I'm using the latest as of uh, 2020, I believe it was June. Come, you know, I'm leaving it in my, put it on the screen here. Uh, again, presets, we just talk about it. And uh, raw video, always make sure it's on. The ratio, again, is up to you. Bit depth, I leave it at 10 bit. I used to play around with 14, 12 bit, and I just ended up doing 10 bit. Haven't noticed a thing. Shutter fine tuning, again, this is where you wanna go up and down, depending to keep that 148, that 180th angle shutter. This is great fine tuning. Now, sound recording is very important to leave the audio delay to zero or off. And, uh, but actually I heard that if you do stop recording, it does, or turn off the sound recording, it increases the recording time. I don't know if that's true, I haven't tested that, but uh, feel free to test that, but I want audio. I like to synchronize between two cameras, so I need the audio. Uh, custom buttons, this is very important. Uh, three times crop toggle, I have it to set. If the peaking is not enough to verify that I am focused, 
I will use the three times toggle. So I will actually three, crop into the image, set my focus, and then I will take out the crop again, pressing set button. So that's very convenient for those critical focus time. The gain, I got it at aperture and ISO, meaning when I press up and down on the dial, on the wheel dial, I pressing up will increase the exposure, lowering the aperture and raising the ISO, depending on which setting has maxed out. And the info selectable, I have it at info one. And pressing that will switch between the live mode and the recording mode. That's it. I do have an SD card that I can overclock the SD card to 192 megahertz. So that's pretty neat. And that's pretty much it. Overall, my menu or the screen settings, I have Kill Canon GUI on, the LV digit peaking. Now the focus peaking setting, I have it as slightly sharper. It makes a difference. So definitely I re highly recommend having that setting of slightly sharper on. That's, those are all the settings that I have personally adjusted. I gotta give credit where it's due. All that I have learned comes from Zeek. Now Zeek is the mastermind be behind these EOSM videos, raw videos. So go ahead and check out his channel. It's an amazing dude. He's very cool, very chill and humble. So I really appreciate the hard work he went through to get us to this point that we could just buy a new camera system and get started shooting awesome raw video. But guys, if this video was helpful to you guys, I would appreciate a thumbs up, uh, liking the video, sharing it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe because I will be posting more raw videos using this little cute raw video recording machine. Well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.